Hello, today I think I've got a great video for you today. Today we're going to do some experiments stacking fans and creating a Contra fan. And when I say stacking fans, I mean literally. We're going to be stacking fans together and seeing how they do. Alright, before we get into all the graphs, a little bit of going into what Contra fans are. You've got a fan blade rotating in one direction and another fan rotating, rotating into another. A little bit of graphical examples. I'm going to show a video clip from actually where these are from as demonstration because that'll really help know where things are and the two fans that are going to be used in this experiment. And first and foremost, uh, Nocto actually has some data out there on what it's like to stack fans. Mind, it's two of their fans, so they're running in series, they're not counter rotating. So fans running in parallel versus fans running. Uh, in series, so in series means stacked fans, as well as a recommended space between the two fans with various models. So my experiment had the fans stacked directly against each other, so doing that separation would be future uh, experiments. If you all like this video and this kind of content, I can uh, go ahead and do more like this, adjusting and varying that distance to find an optimal with noise level. If not, then I'll just leave this one up there. And now let's go to my video links. So you can see that they've got two fans rotating in the same direction and two fans rotating in opposite directions. Talking about how the airflow actually changes. So having counter rotating fans helps cancel out this whirlwind effect, the spinning effect of the air um, that happens with fans. When we take a look at a second video, so it's going to have uh, two fans, they're kind of rotating inlet and outlet, and as well as the static pressure it can generate. So having the two fans in series does allow for a lot higher static pressure. And the really interesting part is this airflow. It creates a much more uh, concentrated airflow than what we would see with a single fan, and I'm going to actually be demonstrating that with the data points. And the last one they had was this fan over here blowing out some candles. It just annihilated 10 meters worth of candles. Mind, this is their fan, not a standard PC fan. So this is where the science of it actually is. So having the two fans, the spin effect, so in effect the air is kind of this spinning in a spiral, having the two fans just ex accentuates, like increases that spiral so it actually gets kind of worse. While having one spinning in the other direction, it grips onto that air and causes it to kind of focus, if you will. Um, there's a more scientific turn, but uh, they basically say recovers tangential energy from the first fan and focuses the airflow, which is why you have counter rotating fans. The orientations we'll be testing for the contra fan will be the Noctua in front blowing through with the Scythe Wonder tornado in the back, and the second orientation will be the Noctua in the in the back and the Wonder Tornado in the front. The reason these orientations do matter are because of the fan spacing and the orientations that you see on them. So you notice the struts go right up to the back on both the fans, but the difference is that Noctua's fan has a little bit of extra space between the blades and the front of the housing, while the scythe here really does not. It gets right up to the front of the housing. So what does that mean? Well, there may be a difference in noise profiles depending on which fan is in the front. So this leads into what the actual experiment is going to be. I'm going to be running the fans through my air cooler, the Noctua U12A. Now, obviously, it's not hooked up to a PC, so I won't be able to get thermal results, but I will be able to get airspeed traveling through it type results. And I'm able to extrapolate that because of experimentation that I've done on this cooler while still in installed on my PC. So the temperature results by that extrapolation are accurate within like 5 watts. Um, so that will be there, but the main focus will be airspeed. So I'll be able to compare the airspeed performance of one fan versus um, two fans stacked. So two A12X25s and uh, a stacked A12X25 and with the counter rotating um, wonder tornado. Yes, I got the name right. I'm also going to do the exact same test, running the fans through my 
a very simplified test for doing CFM. The stacked fans will go on this side, they'll blow the air out, I'll measure the readings. I haven't decided if I'm going to do uh, case airflow testing at the time of right now filming because I don't know how well it will turn out. If I do, it will be a one-off test, you'll obviously see in the graphs. Now you might be wondering why the experimentation for counter-rotating fans. And that is because uh, it's basically an efficiency type thing. So if you have one fan, in order for it to generate pressure, you need to have overlap between the two blades so that air can't basically escape back out um, around it and helps create sort of this pressure seal. And as well as blade distance to the edge of the housing. All those are factors in terms of the overall blade design. When you add a second fan on top of it in a counter-rotating fashion, in essence, you're covering up all the gaps so it kind of seals everything together, um, at least in a PC fan, because you know, you're going to have almost no gap between the two fans, and as they're spinning, they counter-rotate. But basically, the end result with doing this sort of experiment is, I think, it's always been really cool. I've always like the look and appearance of counter-rotating fans. Um, if you're a fan of the Fan Showdown, uh, a user submitted a, a fan blade design where they mechanically made a counter-rotating rotating fan with uh, gearing and built up on top of it. So this sort of simulates that effect. And, um, well, let's, let's do the graphs. Let's prove it. So I've got lots of data points. 9 decibel reading. So as a note, the noise level readings for this particular test and the other tests I've done with my fans, they're not relatable. They're not exactly this 9 decibel mark is the same as my 11 decibel mark in normal testing. So I want to make sure that clear that you can't directly compare this to my other tests, which is why I have the data points for both the A12X25 and the Wonder Tornado. And then we have two A12X25 in series. I did not do the same for the Wonder Tornado. I just felt I didn't need to. And then I did two tests, one with the A12X25 in front and the Wonder Tornado in back, and one with the Wonder Tornado in front and the A12X25 in back. So this blue line and the red line is the Wonder Tornado. The purple here is the A12X25 and then the Wonder the blue line is the Wonder Tornado, then the A12X25, and last and certainly not least are two A12X25s. The graph here is in meters per second, and the bottom is in inches, and that's inches away from the front of the case or the fans. This testing, then my standard normalized testing, so these graphs are not directly relatable to those. So this brings about one of the primary problems with counter-rotating fans, and that's noise. They are particularly noisy when compared to just a single fan, but there are many advantages to them. Um, and a lot of the discussion with these are actually in aircraft design. But you can see that the, um, the counter-rotating, the two counter-rotating fans are just not able to deliver the same amount of airflow at the same noise level. Mind, they get very close as you get to the 14.5 inch mark, but at the other data points, they're just a little bit, they're not producing as much airflow for the same noise level. And for this test, I have one other standardized noise level, and that's 13.5 decibels. This is um, like the A12X25 running at around 1,700 RPM. And we have the Wonder Tornado sitting right there, a good bit below it. And we have the counter rotating tan in blue and in this uh, light blue teal looking color and the two A12X25s in this green. So it's pretty clear that the two stacked A12X25s are just not performing at the same level as the other fans. The stacked uh, Wonder Tornado first A12X25 is quite a bit lower than the other counter rotating tan fan. With the A12X25 in front, it's doing actually very quite well. So if you can put up with that higher noise level, it does particularly well at the 14.5 inch mark. But at any other sort of your compact tower, your mid tower, and um, this is your compact towers or your uh, mid tower cases, you're better off just with regular fans and not doing this counter counter rotating nonsense. Uh, so I'm going to call it 
for some of these tests. And then we have the fans completely let loose, running at 100% PW fan signaling. And this is where the counter rotating really struts its stuff. It just performs hands and legs uh, above everything else. You can see that the twin A12 Extreme 5s are right down there with the regular. And you will notice that my scoring was very similar to what Nocto was finding, that having fans on series ends up getting you the exact same air speed, and we'll have to jump to pressure next to really prove that point. But the the two A12 x 5s perform about the same as one, so it's not worth it doing this in case airflow. Um, but counter-rotating fans really does a lot of extra performance, but look how noisy they are. Um, that noise level is around the same as like 3000 RPM fans. Most of them are in that 30 decibel range. So it's really quite noisy. And the A12 X25 being at 18.4 decibels. So every 10 decibels is twice as loud. So that'd be 28. So it's more than twice as loud as just one A12 X25. So the data points in sort of a same sort of different way. We have decibels on the horizontal and airspeed on the vertical. And we have how the airspeed varies with that decibel rating and how closely they match. So it's pretty clear that the A12 X25 here in blue is just ahead of everybody else. And the Wonder Tornado comes in next. But interestingly, the A12 X25 with the Wonder Tornado behind it is not too far behind the Wonder Tornado. Matter of fact, at now, it is lagging behind at the same types of norms, noise levels, uh, air speed, but it's relatively close. Doing the same thing again at the 14.5 inch mark, where uh, these counter rotating fans tend to do much better at longer distances. This is where the fans actually kind of prove themselves. So at more than 10 decibels is where the A12 x 5 followed by the Wonder Tornado, uh, goes past it. And... Um, this is for these two fans. Other fans may have different noise levels uh, and performance characteristics. So uh, it would be a ridiculous amount of testing to, to, to go through pretty much every type of variation option available. Uh, just want to remind of that point. So we got the Wonder Tornado and then the A12 X5 and then the other two, the counter rotating fan and the two A12 X, or yeah, the two A12 X fives are well towards the bottom, not quite worth it at all. And once again, I want to make the point: only we only ever see air speeds this high when fans are like at 3,000 RPM. So the RPMs are much lower with these fans, but they're still generating a lot of noise. Next up, performance through my CPU air cooler, knocked to a U12A. On the left side here, we have meters per second, and on the horizontal, we have decibels. On the right graph, we have meters per second and RPM on the horizontal. And we can see some pretty interesting results going on. So first, the fan that's lagging, or series of fans that's lagging behind the others is the Wonder Tornado followed by the A12X25. 
while the atrophy x25 then wonder tornado is keeping up fairly well it's a little bit on the low side except for at lower rpms where it's keeping up very tightly but as rpm improves it gets much closer in value Next, the next notable note, our two A12X25s are sitting right there, sitting just a little bit more performant than uh, counter-rotating fans, indicating that stacked performance actually applies here, so it's doing really quite well. And then we have the Wonder Tornado sitting right there and the A12X25 sitting right there. And if we take a look at RPM versus that airspeed, well, this is where the counter-rotating fans are going to be you know superior they don't need to spin as fast to generate the same amount of air pressure but it's sort of a trick right because you have two fans both spinning at the same time so uh not completely sure if that's a fair way to analyze this as opposed to just looking at noise but i have the data mm, figured i'm going to show it to you because it might be useful to one of you to take a look at the data in a slightly different way so a noise normalized results of my nine decibel reading as what's being used standardized for this series of tests, we have the Wonder Tornado here at the top by itself, moving 1.12 meters per second of air. Sorry, it doesn't have units on the back of that, but they, these are in meters per second. Then we have uh, the A12X25 in the front, Wonder Tornado in the back, generating 1.31, two A12X25s generating 1.34, the Wonder Tornado by itself generating 1.39, and and the A12X25 by itself generating 1.3. So you do get a little bit of extra performance at the same noise level by stacking the A12X25 in front of the Wonder Tornado, but realistically, not that much. If we bump things up to 13.5 decibels for these standardized tests, we do see that one A12X25 is doing the best. The Wonder Tornado comes in second, then we have two A12X25s in series. Then we have the A12X25 in front, followed by the Wonder Tornado. And then last, but certainly not least, is the Wonder Tornado, followed by the A12X25 in that counter-rotating fan series. So it's pretty clear that counter-rotating fans are just a little bit too noisy for this sort of application. And then letting the fans loose at 100% PWA fan signaling. So if you are chasing that maximum performance well it gets you there but you pay for it with a noise level figure add on another maybe four decibels to this so it would be really noisy when compared to my standardized noising noise testing methodology uh, but you do get the absolute best in performance it crushes two a12x25s but again it's more than 50 percent noisier and the last series of tests are my CFM testing. It uses the same standardized CFM uh, testing apparatus that I use for all the other tests. So um, not noise values, but performance values would be relatable to my regular testing uh, with this test. Actually, we can see that 1A12X25 is quieter for more airspeed than anything else, then followed by the two fans in series. Uh, whatever, for whatever reason, uh, scythe fans do terrible in this test don't know specifically why so just ignore it i guess um and then hands down the a12 x5 followed by the wonder tornado has been in that same position this entire time and looking at it at the nine decibel mark you can clearly see where things lie one a12 x5 has the same performance value as two a12 x25s in series with them back to back um except the only difference is that the two A12X25s are spinning at a slower RPM, while the counter rotating fans are not as high performance. Uh, bumping things up to 13.5 decibels, uh, basically the trends are holding true, except the one A12X25 by itself is outperforming everything else. Um, and I apologize for this, I had a typo on my graph and needed to fix the header. And at 100% PWA fan signaling in this testing, um, well, the counter-rotating fans are among the top, but interestingly, two A12X25s outperformed the Wonder Tornado front than A12X25 back while being significantly quieter. But if you are chasing the absolute maximum, the A12X25 followed by the Wonder Tornado would come in second. 
and the single Atron X Revive is putting up very close numbers considering it's much wider operation. All right, so after doing all this testing, I do have some general conclusions and some caveats about whether or not you should actually do this with your own system. The first one is a risk. First, I'm not gonna damage my system. This is completely unplugged. If one fan stops working and they're together, there's a potential for the non-functioning fan to just spin by itself. So notice, the Noctua is pulling the air to the non-powered scythe, so this is a risk. You're doing the same thing with two Noctuas. Put them together, and the same sort of thing happens where the Noctua will spin. And again, notice, completely unpowered. So that means that this could draw current into your system and cause damage. What about with one fan pushing the air through? Well, let's lift it up. It's spinning and it's unplugged. What about with the scythe? All right, put in the scythe, it's not spinning, put it behind. Give it a second. And lift, well, it wasn't spinning that time. Let's give it a little spin and see what happens. Get it going. So there is some impedance to get these fans to spin. And, you know, it was spinning, but not as efficiently as the Noctua. So this is just a risk with it if one of the motors in one of the fans dies. And this brings them to the other point, that you're effectively causing extra wear onto the motors of these fans because they're not designed really to be used in this fashion with one fan and another fan. So hopefully the RPMs are close enough or exactly the same that they don't cause that interference with each other. Otherwise, you know, if, if they're running at different RPMs, then it's causing extra resistance on potentially both of them wearing them out a little bit faster. But I can't do that testing. I don't know what time period we'd be looking at uh, for this kind of failure, whether they would fail or not. So this leads to the, like, the final conclusion as to what to do about this and who this is for. So if you're chasing the absolute max in performance, this will do it. This is the, the best way to get maximum performance in your PC. Um, you need to make sure you've got the space for it, effectively a 50 millimeter thick fan. But if you're after every degree temperature wise and maximum performance, this will do it. If you're anybody else, I would not recommend uh, stacking Contra fans unless you're buying a fan ever, if it's ever produced on the market, that is specifically a Contra fan. I wouldn't recommend doing this. There are too many um, risks, uh, but it was a fun experiment to do, and I uh, don't think I caused any harm to my PC um, or caused damage to the fans. Anyway, right, And that brings us to the very end of the video. This is the raw some of the raw data selection for it. I'm gonna have another slide with the count rotating. Um, if you got ideas for experiments for me to do, uh, please leave in the comment sections down below. If you got ideas for fans you want me to take a look at, please leave that in the comment section down below. If you got suggestions on ways I can improve these videos, uh, please let me know. These are kind of one-offs for me, so it's a little bit harder to explain, um, especially in like, simplified terms what's going on in it but um if you got questions i'll try to answer it in the comment section down below or you can join me join a discussion that i have on my discord page if you really like my content want to see this channel grow and evolve and become better and everything like that i do have a patreon page or you can be join me as a youtube member both both or either go a really long way in helping this channel grow because i do want to acquire better testing equipment and being able to purchase fans and everything like that, make this channel channel least self-sustainable. Um, anyways, thank you for making this far in my video. Um, have a great day, and I hope to see you next time here on Computer Tech and More.